Good morning. I'm going to talk a little bit today about this idea of heaven. In uh, a statement that Ernest Holmes, the founder of our church, wrote called What We Believe, he said that we believe that heaven is available to the degree that we become conscious of it. That heaven is available to us to the degree that we become conscious of it. In the Science of Mind textbook, he says that heaven is a state of happiness. I really like that. That sounds really good to me. He says heaven is within. All right? He says the kingdom of heaven is unformed, unlimited, and unconditioned. It's not a place. It is an eternal reality. So clearly in the science of mind, we have a very different idea of heaven than perhaps uh, uh, other teachings uh, might express. Ernest goes on and he says that if we abide in the Father and he abides in us in harmony, peace, power, wisdom, and our thought is friendly, happy, confident, and open, our kingdom of heaven is a good place in which to live. I like that. See, because I feel like what Ernest points to again and again and again is that whether I experience heaven or not here on earth is totally up to me. It's what I bring to the seeing. It's what I bring to uh, the speaking about the situation. It's what I'm looking for. You know, we teach in the science of mind that what you're looking for increases, right? If, so if what you look for, you're going to find it if you keep looking and you keep looking. So if you're looking to prove that your life is hell, you will find all of the evidence you need. And how many of us have ever said that? Oh, my God, I can't believe it. I must have died, lived and gone to hell. Here I am. I am in hell. I, am in, I, I, I have certainly said that, and I'm embarrassed to admit it in front of you. Um, but I have. But I have. Now, the great thing in science of mind is that we believe that this is a state of consciousness. You know, when we are connected to the infinite spirit, you know, that infinite spirit seems to find a greater expression by means of us as, us as health, and well-being and right circumstances. You know, St. Paul said to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Isn't that a wonderful idea? Just the fact that we are calling spirit forward in our consciousness, that we're thinking about our relationship with God, that we are in a relationship on a daily basis with a higher power. Now, we also believe that God is all-powerful, almighty, and that God is love. So a God that is life and love and the source of everything good could only intend good for us. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to have a relationship with this God, a God that only intends good for us. Now, Jesus says a couple of really interesting things in the Bible about heaven, and one is that the kingdom of heaven is within you. And so for us, in the science of mind, I believe that the kingdom of heaven, we experience that when we have an awareness of our oneness with God, our oneness with love, <clears throat> and with each other, when we feel connected with other people, you know, when things in our life seem harmonious, when we are at peace, when there's nothing but an energy of love emanating from our being, I'd say that's heaven. You know? Now, Jesus also said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Well, you know, hundreds of years earlier, the disciples thought that Jesus was coming back very soon, and they would go to a place called heaven. So I believe in the presence and the power for good in life and that my spiritual practice, the spiritual practice that you engage in reminds us of that daily, that there is a power, there is a presence for good. It's available to us. And if I will remember that in the circumstances I am in right now, I could see heaven. In fact, it says in A Course in Miracles, I could see heaven instead of this. So, so often when I look out at the world, I see something that looks like not heaven. I don't know about you. And I have to remind myself, I could see heaven instead of what I'm seeing right now. What has to change? Something in my thinking, something in my consciousness, something in what I'm bringing to the party in that moment. You know, so we can all experience more of that presence and power for good right now. So you know, when, with the advent of new thought, starting in about the middle 1800s, comes the idea that heaven is really a state of consciousness. Up until that point, largely throughout history, again, up until about the mid-1800s, people believed that heaven was like real estate. It was a place, a land of milk and honey, which sounds very dull to me personally. It sounds dull, it sounds sticky. Uh, <laughs> a, 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 a place that you went to when you died, okay? But remember, 
At that time, life was difficult, really difficult for most people. A huge percentage of women died in childbirth. All you needed to do was get a cold and you were dead, right? People did not live very long and their life was very hard. So it was probably a comforting thought that when I die, it's all going to get better. You know the saying, it's good to be king, right? Isn't that Mel Brooks, it's good to be king? I always love that, it's good to be king. Uh, but if it was good to be king, it was pretty much not good to be anybody else, right? <laughs> so think about it. Great for the king, but for everybody else, life is really hard. It's really difficult. You're going to die early. But there is this idea that when you die, it's all going to get better. Well, what happened with the advent of new thought in the mid-1800s is people like Mary Baker Eddy said, no, Jesus is not the exception. He is the example. And he's showing us and that heaven is a state of consciousness which we can experience here and now, which is really good news that we don't have to die for our life to get better. We don't have to die for our problems to go away. We don't have to die in order to have healing. The promise is that we can have that experience right here, right now, if we will do something a little different with our consciousness. So I understand, I understand, you know, my, my life has become a lot more peaceful because I have a relationship with God, a relationship with spirit. If you think I'm crazy now, you should have seen me before God, really. <laughs> In science of mind, we look at what we do, how we proceed is that we look at the current problems or challenges, or as I like to call them, AFCOs, another fine growth opportunity in our life. Uh, we look at the opportunities for growth in our life. And because we have a spiritual practice, you know, because we believe that we are connected with the power and presence of God, we're going to approach things in a spiritual way. We're going to reason it out because God is love. And the kingdom of heaven includes you, and it includes me right now. And that includes God's love for us because we can't be separate from the love of God. We can't be separate from the source of all good in the universe. Because everyone, everyone is loved by God. No one is left out. I don't know if you've ever felt like a really deep sense of peace and well-being. You know, maybe one day you were just sitting in your backyard and the flowers were blooming and the birds were singing and you're just like, okay, all is well with the world. Couldn't everybody just sort of embrace this, you know? Or, or maybe you're with your family or with your kids or grandkids or something like that and you just have such a sense of everything being okay. You know, to me, that feels like the presence of God. That, that, I think that's what God feels like, at least in my mind. The feeling of connection, uh, this feeling of all is well. There's nothing but love, but peace, but good. I think that's heaven. And it's within our ability, I think, to feel that in any situation. So really, what I'm saying is that heaven is waiting for us to call it forth into expression. You know, that heaven is waiting for us to reveal it through the way we're being in the world and through what we're seeing. You know, um, Jesus uses, a, he teaches a lot of parables, and I think these are interesting little teaching examples. And one of the things he says is that the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven. So leaven is yeast, right? And an interesting thing, I don't know if any of you have baked lately, recently, uh, but the thing about yeast is you put a very tiny bit of yeast in and it does an enormous amount of work. You know, it ch that bit of yeast changes everything. And so I think, well, that yeast is like our faith. That yeast is like our willingness to practice. That yeast is like our willingness to sit down and, you know, put my nose in the textbook and just read regardless of what I've been thinking. You know, so what that little bit does is it transforms all of the other ingredients, you know? And I think it's an interesting thing that once you put the yeast in, you can't take it out, you know? That once you start adding faith and belief and consciousness to a situation, you can say, oh, well, I don't believe that anymore, so, but, but you've already started down a road in consciousness. So the kingdom of heaven is within me. I think that's like the little bit of yeast, right, the leaven. And knowing the truth about God and our nature that, that who we are is that we are emanations of the Most High God, that we, are, we were made whole and perfect and complete, I think that's what happens when you get bread. That's the transformation that happens. 
You know, we don't have uh, to search for the kingdom of heaven. It's within us, and we could experience that now. And I think for every single person I know, if I said to them, would it be bad to have more heaven in your life here on earth? I don't know anybody who would say, oh, no, please, I'll wait till I'm gone. I'll wait till I'm dead, you know? I'm, I'm willing for healing to happen years from now. I'm willing to continue on struggling, suffering, being unhappy, being in lack. No, of course not. Everybody would be open and willing to experiencing more heaven right here, right now. I love that we don't have to die to experience that. Things can be better for us right now. Why? Because God is present within us. And God's attributes are present within us. So think about this, that there is within us right now, whether we are actively demonstrating it or showing it, there is love, there is peace, there is wholeness, there is abundance, there is creativity, there's balance, there's joy, on and on and on. All of the characteristics of the infinite mind of God are present within all of us at all times, just waiting for us to reveal them, right? This is, uh, this is what defines... Uh, defines us, those qualities of God that exist within us. They're always there, not the external things. And the external things are fine, but they are not the source of anything in our life. You know, in the Lord's Prayer, we say all the time, thy kingdom come. This is to realize, I think that's there for us to realize the presence of the kingdom is available to us right now on earth, if we will call it forward. Like Ernest says, the kingdom of heaven is available to us to the degree that we become conscious of it. And so we could look at the great masters who've gone before us, the great spiritual masters. They were all like transparencies for the divine, that some aspect of the divine was shining the light through them to show us what we also are able to do. I think it was... Um, it wasn't exclusive to people like Jesus. You know, what we know from uh, doing what we teach in the science of mind, from affirming, oops, from throwing our glasses on the ground, uh, <laughs> what we know in the science of mind from affirming, from treating, and all of that, is, is that brings forward a consciousness where healing can take place, right? So I have to do something, something different than what I'm currently doing right now. So I hope that this morning you will identify some area of your life that you would be willing to start to experience heaven in that area. Maybe it's with regards to physical healing in your body. Maybe it's a relationship that up until now has been a little contentious. Maybe it's something at work, or maybe it's something to do with your finances. You know, but the promise is the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and the kingdom of heaven is within you. So we must see our nature as God created us, you know, that we are always, always in the kingdom. You know, I get it. We all experience bad stuff. I don't know anybody who hasn't, you know, but we don't have to be stuck in it, all right? Experiencing it, mm, okay, that may come, but we don't have to stay in it. It doesn't have to define the rest of our life or our experience. We pray, we affirm, we treat to connect with the deeper truth beyond all of the appearances. You know, so in, uh, in the book of Revelations, John writes, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You know, I think he saw that the kingdom in which there is no error or no evil is available to all of us, all right? So we must do the same thing. We have to see our life. We have to see our world right now. And I know there are a lot of appearances coming at us morning, noon, and night from every possible avenue, appearances, appearances, appearances. And we have to say, you know, I have to see my life, I have to see the world that I live in as whole, it's perfect, it's complete right now. There is no evil at all in God, and therefore there is no evil here in my world. Now, I know, immediately the human mind wants to go, yeah, but what about this, and what about that, and what about this, and what about that? And it's like, no, no, we're talking about a spiritual truth. Remember, we are a metaphysical church. We are interested in spiritual truths that exist beyond this physical reality, right? We overcome appearances by praying and affirming and treating again and again and again. And this, appear, this proves that 
that the appearance can be eradicated. If any of us have ever had a demonstration from prayer, and I know probably every person in this room has, every one of us has had some healing, some demonstration from prayer, that shows us, that shows us that it's possible, right? People often think, you know, well, you know, um, I should be able to solve my problem by myself, as in my willpower should do this alone. But so often, I think we have an area in our life and we try to fill it with the wrong whatever, right? I think everybody is looking for God, whether they know it or not. This has been my personal belief for years. Uh, and, and sometimes people who make the most noise that they don't believe in God are really looking the hardest because they've tried absolutely everything else to fill that place within themselves. To heal, we want to become conscious of the kingdom of heaven within ourselves, right? This is our divine heritage. It's our birthright. We were born with it, you know? The consciousness of the love of God is within us right now. Let's be clear, love heals. Let's be really clear, only love heals. And we could have love, heaven, right now. We are inseparable from God's love. So again, I ask you today, where do you need healing in your life? Because that's where you need to call in and start to see and start to be the consciousness of heaven. Let's pray. Thank you. So we turn our attention inward now for a moment, knowing that we are surrounded and filled with an infinite, loving, intelligent presence that I call God. It's spirit, it's truth, it's love, it's right here where we are. We are all connected with God and we are all connected with each other on the unseen side of life. And so in this awareness of our oneness, knowing and affirming we cannot be separate from God, I speak the word for us that heaven is happening right here, right now for each and every one of us. That whatever area in our life seems most out, seems most troubled, we place it on the altar of consciousness today and say to ourselves silently, I'm willing to experience heaven in this area of my life. I know that the gift of God is freely given to each and every one of us, and so it's only us that keeps us from experiencing heaven. So I know our minds, our hearts, our bodies are filled with the light of God's love right now. And that light of God's love removes anything unlike itself, no matter how long it appears to have been there. I know that each and every one of us, we are transparencies for the light of God to shine brightly in the world as loving actions, as loving deeds, as loving words. We include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold dear. And we know that they too are experiencing heaven right now regardless of the outward appearance. That here on earth, a consciousness of love and peace and healing is available to all. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world so all of those situations that have been pulling at our attention, everything we see in the news or read in the paper, we say God is present in that too, as perfect outcome, as all needs met, as divine healing and circumstances, we accept this. We bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, and synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today, that we are all raised up, that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And with a full heart, I say, thank you, God. I release this word, and so it is. Together we all say, amen.